In the name of the Father, in the Spirit of the Holy Amen. Um, you know, I'm going to, I would say I'm going to have to restrain myself, but I don't know if I can do that, because this is one of my favorite saints, Saint Margaret of Scotland. Uh, she needs to have a movie written about her, because it's like the perfect princess movie. Um, uh, so she is uh, born in the year 1045, and she was born a princess in exile. Uh, her father was Edward the Exile, and he had left England due to political intrigues, fear for his life, and he married uh, there, and in, in, he moved to um, Hungary, and he married, uh, Edward the Exile married a Hungarian princess and had a daughter, Margaret, uh, today's saint. So she grew up for the first 12 years of her life there in Hungary. Uh, but then, uh, when she was 12, uh, Edward the Confessor, he was king of England. Edward the Confessor was, was a pious king. He's a saint in his own right. Um, he was nearing death. And Edward the Confessor had been pressured to marry. He, he wanted to remain a virgin his whole life, uh, giving it to God. And in fact, he did remain a virgin his whole life, but he, was press he received so much pressure to get married that he did. He agreed to get married. Before the marriage, however, he secretly arranged with his uh, wife that they would remain celibate throughout the whole marriage. So he got married, and then he revealed to all of the people pressuring him, ha ha, I got married like you asked, but we're going to remain celibate. So take that. I'm keeping my vow of chastity. So that was Edward the Confessor. So he had no children, so he needed an heir. Who was going to take over England after Edward the Confessor died? And Edward the Exile was, was one that Edward the Confessor personally wanted to come back and take over the throne. So, so young Margaret's father, uh, she makes this journey all the way back to England. And I mean, here, here she was growing up in Hungary in the royal court. And yeah, my, my dad is somehow related to the English throne, but whatever. I mean, who would have thought that she would have to change her whole way of life, leave behind her whole country, the language that she grew up with, all of, you know, whatever friends she had. That would have been very difficult. Uh, but she did. She goes back to England, and she has, uh, there's Margaret, I think, is 14. She has an older brother who is, I think, 15. Um, and tragedy strikes. The minute they land, like day, within days of landing back in England, her father takes ill and dies. And so the whole reason they went back to England is now ruined. Uh, her, her father is dead. He, he, he can't be king. And, and, and uh, you know, her, her older, slightly older brother uh, was, would, was next in line for the throne, but he was 15. And they had not grown up in England. They had nobody backing them, nobody, no, no political advantage. What were they, what were they going to do? Uh, so their life is, 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 is very difficult at this time. Um, and, and during this time, they are visited. So they're in the, the kind of the English court, um, and they're wondering what to do. Uh, the King of Scotland, Malcolm III, traveled to the English court on business, and there he met Margaret's family. Uh, she was 14 years old at the time, and quite gracious, and she left a good impression on the King Malcolm III, who was like 34, he was 20 years older than she was, uh, and, and nothing happened there, but this would prove to be important. Uh, for um, their family was, was, was there in England for a time, uh, and then William the Conqueror arrived. Uh, he was a French uh, um, a king, and he had a kind of a distant claim to the English throne, and he decided to exercise that claim and invade England in 1066, uh, William the Conqueror. Uh, he would uh, arrive, and he would defeat the um, Harold Godwin, who, who had uh, taken the kingship after Edward the Confessor, um, Harold Godwin had taken the throne. He was killed <clears throat> or defeated in battle by William the Conqueror, and thus the French would be become the kings of England for the next 200 years. Now, interestingly, that is where English gets all of its French language. Um, like, why is French the language of polite culture? Because of uh, uh, William the Conqueror. That's why, you know, peasants, you know, in the field, they would have chickens, pigs, and cows, but when they served it to the French, it was beef, pork and poultry, because they had to speak, you know, French in, 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 the, in the royal court. So, a little bit of etymological history there. 
Uh, but what this meant for, for Margaret and, and her mother and brother is that there was really nothing for them in England now. Not only would, had her father died, um, her, son, her, her brother was never going to be king. There was just no, now the French were in charge. There was just nothing left for them in England. So Margaret's mother decides she is going to go back to Hungary and just leave it all behind. But this was not the plan of God. Uh, she's called Margaret of Scotland for a reason. So as the boat is leaving England, uh, there's a terrible storm which drives them north, further and further north, until they are shipwrecked in the very port city where Malcolm III has his castle. Uh, and so he receives them, and this has been 10 years. It's been 10 years since uh, Margaret first arrived in, in, in uh, England. She left, when she, she left Hungary when she was 12 years old. She spent 11 years in England, almost as much time, and now she's shipwrecked in Scotland. And she's 23 years old, uh, princess in exile, basically her whole life. Um, it's not looking too good, right? She, she's just this, this princess in exile. You know, she's spending time here, spending time there. Now I'm in Scotland. What, what is life supposed to be like? What am I supposed to do? Like, God, what are you doing with my life? Well, anyways, uh, Malcolm III remembered that, you know, um, you know, elegant, you know, cute little girl of 14. Well, now she's a woman of 23, and uh, his wife had died. Uh, Malcolm III's wife had died many, many years earlier. Uh, and he just falls completely in love with Princess Margaret. And uh, so much so that he does propose, she accepts, and now this exiled princess is Queen of Scotland. Uh, now, her husband, for his part, Malcolm III, uh, he's, he's ne he was never declared a saint uh, like Margaret was, but they did have very much in common. For Malcolm III, uh, his own father, Duncan, had been king of Scotland many years earlier, but his father Duncan had been killed in battle by a, a usurper and, and a betrayer. Uh, and so Malcolm had spent 17 years as a prince in exile, wandering around Scotland, you know, uh, um, you know having to uh, uh, deal with the fact that his father had been murdered and betrayed uh, by this betrayer. Well, eventually, uh, that man would die, and Malcolm III would come out of exile and become king. So you have an exiled princess, Margaret, and an exiled king, Malcolm. You can see that they, 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 they would have been a very a strong bond, right? He would have listened to her story and her exile and her hardships and, and, and felt that connection. It's like, you know, that, I know what you feel like. I know what you mean. Here's what happened to me. Now, Malcolm III's exile uh, was, this became a famous story in England because the man who killed uh, Duncan was, uh, uh, by, went by the name of Macbeth. Uh, and it was such a famous story that Shakespeare wrote a play about it by the same name. So if you ever read the story of Macbeth by Shakespeare, understand that, 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 that who it's about, Duncan II, who Macbeth murdered, was the father of Malcolm III, husband of Queen Margaret of Scotland. So it's good to know your history. Uh, you end up with uh, um, a greater knowledge in the, how things uh, fit together. So th this too, this husband and wife uh, um, uh, couple, Malcolm and Margaret, uh, royalty in exile, and, and now king and queen, uh, made an excellent uh, pair, made an excellent couple. Uh, Margaret was very refined uh, and very pious, and Malcolm was, was very powerful, very strong, but also very brutish. Uh, he had a, a quite a temper, and because of his time in exile, he had never learned to read. Uh, but Margaret spent, uh, by her gentle example and her patience, she completely won him over, uh, especially to uh, a practice, a firm practice of the Catholic faith. And furthermore, uh, they, they would spend their nights, um, she would read to him in their bed. They would go to bed, and they would sit up, and then she would read to him, and he would sit there listening attentively. Uh, so he was, he was so taken with Margaret uh, and just, just loved her so much that he made her basically uh, second in the kingdom. Uh, he entrusted her with so many affairs, so much power, so much wealth, that he, he just gave it to her and said, whatever she says, that's what you're going to do. Uh, so that's, that's how, wives, that's how you win over your husband, right? Beauty always tames the beast, but it has to be an elegant beauty, a patient beauty, and, and a calm and a self-possessed beauty. That's how she did it. Uh, but that's what God intended. God intended men and women, husband and wives, uh, to be that way.
So uh, what Margaret did, what she began to do for Scotland was um, primarily, as I mentioned, her her number one concern was her husband, the king. That's what she did. She took care of him first, uh, read to him, and and, and cared for him. But then after that, um, she um, would, let's see... mm -mm, she unified the, uh, the, the Catholic Church. She was very much concerned with um, rebuilding monasteries and, and, and convents. She invited in monks and nuns, and, and especially the clergy. The clergy and the bishops had grown distant from Rome, and there were some variants in liturgical practices. And so she encouraged them, uh, even, even demanded that they reform themselves with the church in Rome and, and begin cleaning up their, the sacraments and liturgical practices and so on. So that was a tremendously important service uh, that Margaret did for uh, Scotland. Uh, she also, she spent much of her time in prayer, in devotional reading and ecclesiastical embroidery. She rose at midnight, uh, um, every midnight to recite matins and used to retire into a nearby cave for solitude. Actually, there's a a public park on the castle grounds today. It's called St. Margaret's Cave, where she would go and pray. Uh, She and her husband were very temperate. They would keep two fasts per year, once during the 40 days of Lent, and then again during the four weeks of Advent. Uh, She spent much of her time in charitable works. She would serve orphans and the poor every day before she ate her own meals, and she washed their feet in imitation of Christ. Uh, She was also very generous to the common people. She interceded for the release of captives and assisted others uh, who had been driven into exile. Uh, She also um, was a great example to those um, um, other uh, uh, noblemen at court. Uh, She showed by her example that the royalty, you know, the king and the queen, that that was the example they set for everybody else. Everybody else needed to imitate them, and they set an excellent example. Uh, She promoted the arts and education and rebuilt many churches and monasteries fallen into disrepair. Uh, So for 20 years, for 20 years, uh, uh, Queen Margaret and and King Malcolm ruled Scotland thus, which greatly, greatly benefited from their charity and goodness. Uh, But this was to end, uh, unfortunately, very suddenly and very sadly. Um, There there was a small uprising in a certain remote part of Scotland, and and Malcolm and his oldest son departed to to deal with this. And he was in his 60s at this time. He, he He was getting older. And Margaret herself was very sick, uh, in part due to her frequent fastings and labors for her kingdom. Uh, She asked Malcolm not to go, but he felt that it was his duty. Uh, But while there, he was betrayed on this mission, and he was killed along with his oldest son. Uh, When Margaret herself heard of the news of the death of her beloved husband and her son, uh, this was too much for her in her weakened state. And after hearing the news, she herself died four days later. Uh, And the entire country was in shock over this. I mean, people are hearing the king had died and he was betrayed. And then just a few days later, the queen has died also. Just a terrible blow uh, to the kingdom. Uh, However, uh, the country of Scotland continued in its progress in the faith. uh, For Margaret and Malcolm had had uh, six sons and two daughters, all of whom continued piously in the faith. Um, In fact, today, the British royalty today does have some roots going back to Queen Margaret. Uh, So, um, you know, what a life. Uh, uh, What an example of courage and perseverance under hardship. And just trust in God. Uh, For for the whole first part of her life, she was in exile. As I mentioned, she was here. She was there. She was shipwrecked. She was, her father died. Where was the providence of God? right? Uh, But that came through. That was all part of God's plan. And and would Malcolm and Margaret, would they have gotten married? Would she have had the influence over him that she did if she had suffered? If her life hadn't been hard, even like her husband's life had been hard? And, and we forget that. You know, we forget that, you know, when, when we're going through hardships, we, all we think about is ourselves. We don't think about other people. You know, we can hear about other people. We hear about how hard other people's life is. And we're like, oh, well, you need to trust in God. You need to just pray and have faith, etc. Well, what about when our life is hard? And suddenly it's a different story. Suddenly that's when, you know, we, we start to lose our faith. And how could God let this happen? Well, you didn't have a problem when God let it happen to other people. But suddenly when it happens to me, now I have a problem? 
What does that mean? That means we're full of pride. It's pride. God, how could you let this happen to me? I'm different. I'm not like all those other people it happened to. How could you do this to me? That's a very great pride when, when people do that. Uh, but, but think about that. Think about other people. And, and, and I've heard this so many times, that people who have had it difficult, their life has been hard, but they've really struggled, they've come through it, and then they meet somebody else, and they are able to help somebody else because of their own suffering. All the time, people will say, I, I wouldn't trade it for anything. I'm glad that I suffered because what I learned in that suffering has enabled me to help another person. And when you're able to do that, it, it, it all, it's all worth it. It is all worth it. And that is one of the, the, the main, uh, uh, one of the, the, so many lessons we can learn from the life of St. Margaret, but that is one of them. We can benefit, not just we can benefit ourselves from our suffering, we can benefit other people as well. Uh, so, uh, but it started. How was Margaret able to do all of this? She started with herself. She accepted her sufferings. She maintained her piety. She took care of herself. And then after that, she was able to care for her husband. And she didn't start immediately by like, I'm going to take over the kingdom. She did her daily duties. She took care of herself, her prayers. She took care of her husband and his needs. And everything else flowed from there. And that's how we're going to change the world, is by focusing on our domestic duties. First myself, I put my house in order, my interior house. Then I put my exterior house in order, and then it can overflow and benefit, you know, a kingdom, a nation, the world, whatever it may be. And for 900 years, you know, for over 1,000 years, uh, Queen Margaret's example benefited that, that country of Scotland. Uh, so let us keep this in mind. Let us never uh, 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 question God or his providence or his love in times of difficulty, but look to the examples of the saints who, who by their royal dignity, if not uh, uh, by their title, by their example, by their virtues, were a great example of what the, the daughter of a king should be. And that is what all of us are, sons and daughters of the King Christ. Not King of Scotland, not King of Europe, not King of the world, King of the universe. We are related to him, sons and daughters of the King. Let us and, and, uh, strive to develop in ourselves the virtues proper to that title. Uh, so St. Margaret of Scotland, pray for us, and may God bless you all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.